Let's take a look at the medial and lateral ankle tilt. This is a very simple looking exercise, but it's vital to keep these joints working fluidly, um, distributing force appropriately in the body. Here's how the exercise works. You start in a good neutral stance, nice tall posture. You slowly roll to the outer surface of the foot, keeping the weight back toward the heel. That's where you want to feel the stretch. And then you roll back down the neutral, step out, keeping the toes facing forward, tall posture, and then you slowly roll to the inner surface of the foot to open up the joint on the inside. Let's take a quick look at exactly where these joints can be found. We're gonna go down and take a look at the foot. Let me show you the exact targets I want you to be going after in the feet with the medial and lateral tilts. For the lateral tilt exercise, which is this one, I'm trying to stretch a joint area right here. If you take and find the bottom of your outside ankle bone and your heel, split the difference between the two. That's where the joint lies. I go ahead and put a dot here just so you can see it. On the inside of the foot, we're going after a very similar area, right here. Again, find the bottom of the inside ankle bone and the heel, split the difference between the two, and there's your target. I highly suggest at home that you grab a pen and go ahead and mark those spots. As you stand up, knowing exactly where these points are will really help you identify the exact way to do the exercises. Doing these precisely will make a huge difference in the value as you practice them at home. Some of the most unique exercises in Z-Health are our toe pull exercises. They're specially designed to target an area of your body that almost never moves. So let me go through the basics of how to do the exercise and then I'm gonna show you the specific targets for each one. A basic toe pull exercise looks like this. I take one leg, I put it directly back behind my body while I maintain a tall posture and I try and keep the knee of the front leg almost locked. The toes of my rear leg are curled under, if this was the floor, they look like this, they're curled under so that I can actually create a stretch just below my ankle. Once I have the stretch in the correct place, I'm gonna use my lead leg and do a three inch knee bend, just like this, and come back up. This small pulsing motion of the lead knee will actually create a stretch in the foot. Why don't we go down now, take a look at the foot, and I'll show you the exact targets I want you to hit. For the outside toe pull, we're gonna take a look at your outside ankle bone, Find the soft spot directly in front of it and just down toward the toes, right where this dot is, this black dot. That's your target for the outside toe pull. For the middle, you're gonna find your two ankle bones, draw a line that meets in the center of the foot, and then move down from there about an inch. Again, right where this black dot is. That would be your target. For the inside toe pull, go to the inside ankle bone, find the soft spot directly in front of it, and move just below, right where this dot is. That's the target for your inside ankle bone. You need to hit these targets precisely to get the maximum benefit from the exercise. In a level one neural warm-up, we have two different knee exercises. The first one is a closed chain knee circle. It looks a little bit like your old gym class knee circle, but we're gonna do it in a different way to emphasize good posture. You're gonna start with the knees locked back, drop them out to the side, make a circle in front of the body to the opposite side, and then relock them. It looks just like this, okay? Good, now do it in the opposite direction. As you do that, there are a couple of important things to keep in mind. Most people, as they're coming here, like to flex forward, don't do that. Stay up nice and tall. The other thing that happens often is this, I'll demonstrate it from the side. The heels like to come up off the ground. If you do that, you're actually negating some of the benefits of the exercise. So keep your heels down, rotate through in each direction. The next exercise is our hanging knee circle. It looks like this. You lift one leg off the ground, pushing the heel of the stance leg down, crown of the head up. You're going to initiate a pendulum motion with your hip that will eventually turn into a full circle at the knee. As you do this, stay as relaxed as possible. If you see someone doing it like this, we call this muscling through the exercise. There's too much tension here. The idea in each of the knee exercises is to create as much relaxation as possible massaging the inside of the knee that'll build health, strength, and endurance for these really vital and important tissues. The hip exercises in the level one neural warm-up are fairly simple, but there are still some important points to remember. You're gonna be standing on one leg, and every time you stand on one leg in Z-Health, you push the heel of the stance leg into the ground, push the crown of the head up to the ceiling so you're maintaining a really tall posture. 
The next most important part of this drill is to make sure that the pelvis stays facing forward. Most people have hip and low back problems because they move together and not independently. This is a drill that's designed to teach you how to move the hip only by itself. So you're going to stand on one leg, pushing the heel down, pushing the crown of the head up, and you're just going to make a full circle at the hip. You want to focus right here, and you're going to work in both directions. One of the common errors that we see with this is that people tighten up the abs and roll forward. Don't let that happen. Stay nice and tall. If balance is an issue, make sure you're holding on to something. And last but not least, make sure that the circle is a full circle. In other words, it goes to the back portion of your body. That's the one that people like to leave out. Make sure you're working on both sides. It'll help your balance. It'll help your mobility. It'll help your rotational power. It'll also help the health of your hips, pelvis, and low back. In the level one neural warm up, there are two different pelvic exercises. The first is just called an anterior posterior tilt. Let's take a quick look at that one. You're gonna bend your knees, press up through the crown of the head, and then simply move the pelvis forward and back. Now, we do this differently than a lot of people may have seen it in an aerobics class, um, doing abdominal crunches or weight training. Here are the key points. In this position, you wanna make sure that the spine stays long, that you're not involving the low back, but rather just moving the pelvis. In other words, there should be no motion happening above your belt line. And last but not least, and this is a tough one, you wanna make sure that the abs stay relaxed, not tight. So in other words, we don't want this kind of motion happening, but a very dis discreet, controlled motion of the pelvis. From here, we're now gonna move into a hula hoop type circle. So we're gonna move the pelvis forward, to the side, back, to the opposite side, and forward again. Try to smooth that out until it looks like, again, a hula hoop type circle. This is a vital exercise if you play any kind of sports, Anything where you're trying to develop rotational power, you need to have good control of the pelvis, hips, and low back independently. And that's what this helps you learn. As we talk about the lumbar spine, let me first demonstrate the exercise for you, and then I'll talk you through the important details. I'm gonna start with my knees bent, nice tall posture. Good. That's our lumbar front circle. Here are the important details. As I start to the side, I want to make sure that it's a nice, clean, sideways tilt. In other words, I'm not bending back, I'm not bending forward, I'm not rotating forward, and I'm not starting over here. Instead, I'm bending directly to the side. Next, once I start the forward part of the circle, I drop this upper arm in, and it looks almost like a marionette that's been let go of. That's the amount of relaxation I want you to have, not only in your arms, but in your neck and in your low back. Let me demonstrate it one more time. Knees bent, tall posture, tilt to the side. Good, if you practice it just like that, focusing on the low back, you will mobilize the lumbar spine and gain a lot of control in an area that creates back pain in millions of people across the country. We've already talked about the lumbar front circle. Now we want to talk about the back circle. It's done in exactly the same way, only this time, instead of focusing on relaxing to the front, we now have to focus on lengthening the spine and relaxing as we move back. Here's what it looks like. I'm gonna start with my hands up by my chest as a counterbalance, knees bent, I'm gonna tilt to the side. I move all the way around in a circle to the back of my body and come up on the opposite side. Again, the important parts here are to make sure that you're long through the spine. You don't want to do this. I'm going to demonstrate it from the side so you can see it. A lot of people, because they're afraid of arching their back, once they're to this position, start to collapse as they come back. If you do that, you're going to create fulcrums in the low back, fulcrums in the neck, and it's going to be quite uncomfortable for you. So try to avoid that. You avoid that by staying long, moving the eyes to the back wall. Let's do it one more time. Nice and tall, bend to the side, start to the back, lengthen, open the chest, come all the way around, and come up on the opposite side. If you work the spine to the front and to the back in these circular patterns, you're going to cover all the potential ranges of motion, keep your back healthy and strong. One of the least moved and controlled areas in the human body, in our culture at least, is the chest and mid-back area. We have some very specific exercises that we want to go through to help you regain that control because it pays big dividends for your spinal health and for your shoulders and neck. 
Here's the basic exercise. We call it thoracic anterior posterior glide. The idea is you're going to imagine that someone's pushing on your sternum, forcing your air out. That will make you round your back, and then you reverse it. You bring the mid back forward and the chest and sternum forward and up. Now, I'm gonna do that a couple times. And then what I wanna show you is what most people do instead. Most people, instead of moving the spine, actually focus on moving the shoulder blades. Let me show it to you from the side. Most people do this during this exercise. This is moving my shoulder blades and my shoulders. It has nothing to do with my spine. Instead, the motion should look like this. The shoulder blade should stay still, and instead the spine should move. Now, on top of that particular exercise, we're gonna complicate it a little bit more by adding in side-to-side -side motion to create a full circle. So if you start in your neutral stance, you'll lift the chest forward and up, move it to the side, move it back, move it to the opposite side, and move it forward again. As I smooth that out, I have a full circle. Now, it may look like a funky dance move, but believe it or not, it's one of the most important mobilizations you can make for your back, your shoulders, and your neck. As we work the cervical spine in the level one neural warm-up, one of the biggest things you need to keep in mind is that you want to move the whole neck. In other words, don't focus just on moving from here, but include the area that goes all the way down to the top of your shoulders. Our first movement is simple rotation. From a nice tall posture, you're going to imagine there's a board under your chin, and you're going to rotate side to side. Make sure as you do this, at first, you may want to practice it in the mirror to ensure that you're not tilting your head flexing or extending as you rotate. The next motion is lateral tilting or lateral bend. You're going to imagine there's a straight line running through your forehead and nose and it's going to tilt to the side just like that. Again, stay tall throughout the motion and make sure you're involving the whole neck in the, in the tilt. The last piece on that one is to make sure you don't raise the shoulder to keep it down and relax. Next, we have the chicken exercise, one of my favorites. You're going to lead this motion with your chin, but again, trying to involve the whole neck. So standing nice and tall, imagine there's a board under your chin, and you drive the chin forward and pull it back as far as it will go. As you pull back, also imagine that you're being pulled up into a nice tall posture. The final neck exercise in the level one neural warm-up is the rotating figure eight. This one is fairly simple as long as you focus on the actual shape of the motion. The, the figure eight is on its side, or like an infinity sign, I'm gonna trace it with my nose. And you wanna work it in both directions. The special instructions in that one is to make sure that your shoulders stay down and relaxed, and that you don't allow your head to drop into extension like that as you're doing the exercise. Try and keep it on a plane that's even with your shoulders. It looks again like this. In the level one neural warm-up, we're going to be doing three different figure eights with your shoulder. The first is a front and back, the second is a top and bottom, and the third is what we call side and cross body. Let me go through some important points on this one. Whenever you're preparing to do any of the shoulder work, make sure that the elbow is locked and keep it locked throughout. In other words, if you start here and then find the elbow bending, that's cheating. Make sure that it stays locked. Next, make sure you keep a loose fist in front and the thumb on top. That helps keep a solid position for the arm throughout the exercise. Next, you wanna make sure you're maintaining good tall posture. And then finally, you're ready to do your figure eights. So let's take a look at each one. In the front and back figure eight, the main challenge is to keep the torso facing forward. In other words, a lot of people wanna rotate the torso when they move toward the back portion. Don't let that happen. Keep it facing forward. Next, we have the top and bottom figure eight. The biggest problem with this one is that as the top circle is one of the most difficult circles for the shoulder, many people start to let the elbow unlock. Pay particular attention to that. Last but not least, we have the side and crossbody figure eight. In this one, because this position is difficult for some people, they like to rotate the torso again. So it looks a little bit like this when you're doing it wrong. Again, make sure the torso stays facing directly forward. And that's a proper way to do a side and crossbody figure eight. Try and keep the trap relaxed throughout. That will help us focus the exercise directly on the joint we're targeting. When we work the elbows in the level one neural warm-up, there are a couple of important points to keep in mind. 
First of all, it's a starting position. You're gonna be palms down, elbows locked, arms at 45 degrees from the body. In other words, don't start out here. You wanna start in this position right here. The movement looks like this. You bring the hands toward the face, open the elbows up, relock the elbows with the palms up, and then rotate down again. That's a complete elbow circle. One of the problems that we see most commonly is that at this point, people like to open the shoulders up and finish out here. Believe it or not, that actually takes pressure off the, jo the joint that we're targeting, so don't let that happen. You'll complete your circle just like this, moving from locked to unlocked elbows in both directions. The more you do that, the more free your elbow will feel and the stronger the tissues that support it will be. Whenever we work the wrist in the level one neural warm-up, we want you to focus on the watch band area. In other words, don't think about this portion of your hand and don't think about your forearm, but think about the part that joins those two because this is what you're gonna be moving. To start with the exercises, you're gonna pull your elbows in close to your sides, making sure that your knuckles are parallel to the ground. In other words, we don't want them tilted this way. Knuckles are gonna be parallel to the ground and then you're gonna focus on the wrist, moving it up and then moving it down. You'll be doing that on both sides. I like to call this my karate kid paint the fence motion, okay? But really focus on not the hand, but the wrist throughout. Next, you'll come to the starting position, again, with the knuckles parallel to the ground, and then you're gonna focus on moving that same area in and out. As you do this, try and stay relaxed, keep your shoulders down, maintain good posture, and really mobilize this area here. It's vital for pre preventing carpal tunnel and a host of other repetitive stress syndromes. As we take a look at the hands in the neural warm-up, first of all, we're gonna talk about the two different motions. We're gonna do a pinky leads hand circle and an index leads hand circle. We have two different targets. For the pinky leads, you're gonna think about the spot on the hand directly below the pinky. That's where you're supposed to feel the stretch. The exercise works like this. Keep your elbows close to your sides, tall posture, palms facing away from you. Focus on the pinkies, turn them towards your body, point them at the floor, point them at the wall in front of you, up to the ceiling, and then rotate around again. As you do this, you should feel a nice mobilizing sensation right here on each hand. The index uh, hand circle is going to work in reverse. You're gonna start with the palms facing you, turn the palms away, point the index finger at the wall in front of you, at the floor, back at your stomach, up to the ceiling, and circle around again. Go through that a couple more times. As you do this one, you should feel the stretching sensation happening right here. As you make sure to hit both those targets with the index leads and pinky leads hand circles, you're gonna make your hands much stronger, more flexible, more mobile, and more controlled. Some of the most overlooked joints in the human body when it comes to training are the small joints of the fingers. Unfortunately, this is also where a lot of people begin developing arthritis even at a young age. Here's an exercise that will help us prevent that. Start by facing the palms toward one another and spread the fingers. We're gonna start with our flexion wave, so we're going to flex those fingers down as tightly as possible and then wave them out. You wanna do that two or three times, and then you wanna reverse it. You wanna fold the fingers down and then pull them into extension. If you're doing this correctly, you'll feel all the small joints of the fingers working and also the muscles in the back of the forearm. We don't wanna forget our thumbs in this, so let's practice the flexion wave. So flex the thumb down and wave it out flex and wave, and then reverse it. Fold the thumb down and pull into extension. Fold and pull, fold down and pull into extension. Shake the hands out. You need to practice those daily as part of your neural warm-up to keep those fingers strong and healthy. To work the jaw, which has joints on both sides of the face, we're going to make sure that you open the mouth about halfway, and then we're gonna start with a forward, back, or anterior, posterior glide. As you do this, don't let your body come forward. Maintain a nice long posture, pulling up through the crown of the head. So the jaw opens halfway, and think about moving your teeth forward and back. Just like that, about that speed. Let me go ahead and turn to the side so that you can see this. From here, again, the jaw opens halfway. And you move it forward and back. Next, we're gonna take a look at side to side. It's done exactly the same way, only this time make sure that you really maintain control of the speed. You want it to be a nice, slow, smooth motion. 
So open the jaw halfway. And move it side to side. Again, not a pretty exercise, but vital for the health of your teeth and jaw. Focal accommodation training is vital if you play sports, drive a car, or do anything that requires your eyes to adjust to objects quickly. It works very simply. You're going to put one hand close to your face, one hand far away. What you want to do is quickly, while keeping your head still, move your eyes back and forth between your hands and then switch. You only leave your eyes focused on the hand as long as it takes for the blur to go away and then you quickly change it. Practice this regularly and make your eyes very strong. We're now going to take a look at your eye musculature. Your eyes have six different muscles around them that allow your eyeballs to move in a full circle. Unfortunately, most of us don't ever practice that, so they tend to get a little bit weak, which can create vision problems and all kinds of other issues for us. Very simple exercise to help remedy that. Keep your head still, put your index finger out in front of you, focus both eyes on the tip of the index finger. While maintaining good posture, you're going to move the finger in a full circle. The circle should be big enough that you're feeling a slight strain in all of your eye muscles at the extreme ranges of motion. Work it in both directions, keep focused on that finger, and then relax. As you practice this, your eyes will grow much stronger. It will help take care of many of your vision problems. Let's talk about muscles for just a second. Muscles only are as strong as they are able to contract the maximum number of fibers. To simplify that, you can imagine that a muscle is made up of, let's say, 100 fibers. There are obviously millions, but let's say 100. Most of the time when people use their muscles, they only contract about 30 of those fibers in our example. So what we're gonna do by practicing our muscular activation exercise is teach your body how to recruit more fibers in any motion. So in essence, what we're gonna teach you to do is to be a little bit stronger. The way this exercise works is you start by gripping the ground with your feet. You then tighten up all the muscles from your knees down. Calves, front of the legs, then you're gonna move up. You tighten up the quads, the hamstrings, your butt, you lift the pelvic floor. Now the trick is when you start to tighten up the abdomen, most people round forward. Please don't do that. Stay up nice and tall, tighten up all the way through the spine, the back, the outside of the arms, the front and back of the arms, all the way down until you make big fists. And then we want an explosive relaxation. Your body generates power and strength by understanding the difference between tension and relaxation. Make sure you're practicing those things as you work on your muscular activation techniques. Let's take a quick look at what we call relaxation in motion. This is the end of the neural warm-up because what we're trying to do is release the, any tension that you may have built up during the course of the exercises. It's pretty simple. You're going to raise your heels an inch, a half inch to an inch off the floor and then start to let them bounce. It's almost like jumping rope in reverse or jumping rope without letting your toes come off the floor. You want to stay nice and relaxed. You should feel the shock of your heels hitting the ground coming all the way up through the body. And the more relaxed you are and the more parts that are moving, the more effective this exercise is. You want to bounce for about 20 to 30 seconds. You want to end it with a nice deep breath in. And an exhale that you push out with the continuing vibrations. The more you do this, I can encourage you to do it throughout the day because the more you practice it, the more relaxed your body will be.